Hello, this is Amy the Potter here, and I am going to make my first bowls in many, many years. I have not thrown a bowl yet. Um, since I've been back on the wheel, I've only made mugs. So this is a moment, and you can say that you were there. Uh, I have this set up in a ring light, and I can't totally tell what you can see and what you can't see. I think that you can see everything. Yeah. I think you can see. First step is centering, just like always. This is called dropping the hole. There's a little bit of a, let me center this, a little bit of a wobble in there. And you can throw clay that isn't perfectly centered. It just gives you a little bit of a trouble. Like I have a little, a little, a little something going on in this piece of clay here. Let's see if we can center it on the way out. Oh yeah, it's a big, big old air bubble in there. That's what it is. We'll see how this goes. I'm pressing the bottom. I'm gonna set the pointer when I get done with this. Unfortunately, I started with the one that I used some reclaim for, so it's not the best one. You can see this big, big, big air bubble in it. I did not wedge it very well. As you can see here. I'm actually going to get rid of this one. It's not, not worth it. Actually, why don't we do something fun? Let's see if we can kind of smush it up and re-wedge it right here just for fun. I see people doing all kinds of crazy stuff on on videos. Might as well try it. That noise is the bat not fitting the bat pins very well. So, yeah, we got some problems here. <laughs> okay, usually I do one first before I go live. Let's just put this one on the side. We'll call this a one for re-wedging and doing later. Okay, woohoo! Back to the OG 12. Okay, this should go better. to clean up that spot on the outside. Um, right on the edge, have that be a nice clean line there. A little bump of clay making your whole system go wonky. Now everything about this is muscle memory for me. So it's just all gonna be me just remembering, oh yeah, you do it like this. Keep the rim nice and solid because it's going further out. Slowing the wheel down. Oopsie. Oh my god, two! <laughs> two losses. Okay. This is Amy Humility Day. This is why you always do one first. Two losses. Okay. These will be great bowls later. Here we go. Let me slow down. Slow myself down, center myself. All of my clay, um, I'm going to bring this up and down, which I don't normally do, but I'm going to do that. All of my clay has uh, sat for several years and got really hard, and I had to reconstitute it all. And sometimes that does mean that you have like hard and soft spots. It's not as like yummy and perfect as, as it was straight out of the bag originally, when it was originally mixed. That little up and down will help stabilize things. No, still has a big wonk in it.
This is the point we got to last time. Let's see what happens now. And then after I get the first one to a size and shape that I like, where I feel like it's right, then I can set my pointer and then after that it becomes much easier because I know where I'm going. All right. That was a little stressful for a second there. I can't tell anything if anybody's here or even if it's live. <laughs> This is called a rib, this tool that I'm using here. I'm also really aware of my shoulders, relaxing my shoulders, my jaw, my face. Breathing. So easy to forget the basics. Okay. And I will actually leave this and cut it off later. Um, so I don't do any unnecessary dwarfing. And I'll use this to get it off. And I use my rib right by the back, back pin and try not to push it straight into my throwing stick. Okay, and I'll just check the size. Yes, I like the shape. I need to adjust my foot pedal because if I take my foot off of it, it just goes like crazy. Okay, now it should be a little smoother sailing, we can hope, from now on. This is, I roll it here to moisten the back, and so it has a better chance of sticking to it if it's just a little bit moist. And it also, rolling it like that, uh, creates a round bottom so I won't get air bubbles. If I were to just throw these flat bottom pieces straight onto the bat, there's a good chance there'd be like a little pocket of air underneath, which would make a little bit of a wonky bottom. Bowls. After I do these serving bowls, then I'll do a bunch of small bowls. And I know that there's lots of people who are, for years, have been asking me for small bowls. So now I have my pointer here, so I can go straight to that pointer. And I was saying recently that the, to determine the speed of the wheel, I like to go basically as fast as I can go while still feeling in control. We use these bowls pretty much exclusively for salads. I eat out of this bowl almost every day. As, I know I call it a serving bowl, but really it's like a perfect bowl for a nice big salad. Or like a salad that's a meal. <sighs> and then, oh my gosh, there's so many different kinds of bowls. I like to make pasta bowls and these other bowls that are kind of a combo bowl plate, which I think I settled on the name dinner bowl. Hi, Cheryl. And I'm saving these for later as far as cutting them up. I'm not going to cut them up until later. Let me see if I can get the rims to stay nice and tight. All right. Let me know if the camera angle should be changed. I can like barely see. I don't know if anybody has commented, but I can barely see the phone. 
I have so many problems with my phone. I, the other day I dropped my phone. Unfortunately, even though I had a um, phone case on it, it cracked the back of the phone. So now my phone is cracked. And it has this blinding white light that comes out of it. <laughs> so it was actually a blessing because I was, I was very conscious of the fact that I had been spending way too much time on my phone, especially now that I'm like trying to make all these Instagram reels and videos and stuff. So I'm just on my phone all the time. And I was kind of like, how can I quit this terrible phone habit? Oh, a blinding white light shining out of the phone that doesn't allow me to look at the phone. That's a good solution. That's a way. Here's the breath. And that's more like it. That's a better size. Okay. Just a little bit bigger. more flosser in there. Um, if you have watched me before, you'll know that I am a big fan of the exhale right here. Whenever you're trying to make something happen, exhale. Right here, I'm trying to use this rib, exhale. You can inhale when you're preparing like now. Right now, I exhale. meeting at three o'clock. What time is it? Oh, I got time. Okay. And two. Let's go. Oh, Cheryl, you're saying something and I can't see what it says, but I'm going to guess you're asking how many pounds. All I see is how many. <laughs> These are two pounds and they're probably in the end about 10 inches in diameter. Two pounds, two pounds I use for a small serving bowl. I call these small serving bowls. Or perfect salad bowl. I find that adding the word perfect <laughs> to, your, to your, the name of your pots can help sell them. Perfect salad bowl. I hope that's what you were asking. If you were going to ask something else, like how many, that's all I can see is how many. If you're going to ask me how many of these I'm going to make, the answer is 13 in this sitting. Although I lost the first two, so I have to re-wedge them. This is the pull where I can really move the clay, that second pull. This is, that's, that's the end. Two pulls to move the clay. Now I'm just shaping it and trying not to lose it. Put the lid in there. I leave, um, I have, because of the design I've, I've always done, at least in the past, um, I have a flat rim that I leave for decoration. So I, I come up to the edge. But what I'm going to do later is watch a video on rolling the rim. And I want to do some, I want to do some, make some bowls with rolled rims. So if you've never seen them before, uh, you can make a very thin bowl with this big, fat-looking rim that's actually hollow. It's just that this same rim that I have here, it's just basically thinned out and rolled over into a big bubble-looking thing. Oh, and here, uh, you might notice at 6 o'clock I've got my finger right underneath, riding on the clay to support it. It keeps me centered and it supports the rim. And it keeps me in touch with what's happening with the bowl. Okay. Let's see, looks good. Do do, do do, do do.
This very special tool is from Broccoli, Broccoli Rubber Band. Oh good, yes, I got your question right. Great. Cheryl, I really appreciate your engagement. I love it when you ask me questions and say things on my posts and everything. It's just, it's just a nice thing to do, to interact with somebody. And so I really appreciate that you do that. And I also understand that people are shy or maybe they don't have anything to say or maybe they don't really like me. <laughs> and that's okay too. Moving right along. Hmm. All right, now I'm looking at these and I'm assessing my skill. And I'm seeing that I could, uh, I could do a little bit better with the very, with the feet. I could kind of press it a little bit more when I'm pulling it, when I'm doing the last. Oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? This is another one of these hard, it's got a hard spot. It needs a little extra love from me. You might have seen more than most potters, I just don't usually do this type of centering of up and down and up and down. I try to really uh, work the clay as little as possible. Two poles. <laughs> like minimal centering. Minimal centering. Two poles. With vertical forms, it's three poles, but. And maybe with a larger bowl. All right. Sorry if I'm yelling, I have these AirPods in, I probably can be quiet. <laughs> I feel like I'm yelling so you'll hear me, but I forget that you're right here in my ears. So this first pull is to go towards the, the throwing stick, towards my destination, and also to even out the walls. Here's where I'm gonna grab the clay from in and out. And now I'm supporting it on the inside and really pulling it on the outside. To the point. Here's where I could do a little bit better that I noticed. I can press it a little bit more out. Let's see how I did. So often, um, for me, becoming better is about being a little more aggressive, uh, at least with pottery, <laughs> and probably with people too. Yes, yes, this fixed up this problem I was having. So my goal is always to um, be efficient. <laughs> oh gosh. Like move the clay, use all the clay, don't trim a lot, you know, trim minimal trimming, you know, just like as little as I can at the end there. Obviously, you still have to trim it. There's no foot on the bottom of this right now. But I just really like to, um, as much of that clay as I can get up off the bottom. I like to do that. Okay, oops, I keep wanting to cut them off. But I'm trying something different here today. I'm gonna cut these later this evening. Yes, that has a much better uh, opening from the bottom. It's not as uh, like foot then bowl. It's more like just like bowl. And that will give me less, less work later. I've seen some cool things on Instagram where somebody will have like 
eight balls of clay wedged up, and then they throw like the one pound pot, then the two pound pot, then the three pound pot, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, but one thing that I have seen, at least with this one person who I saw do it, is that after about four pounds, there wasn't really any difference in size. So I wonder, is there a point? <laughs> is there a point to adding more clay if it doesn't get any bigger? You know, if you could throw a three pound bowl and a five pound bowl and they're the same size, wouldn't you just throw a three pound bowl? I mean, it's a great challenge. Even just centering more clay is a great challenge. So I have to say that. One little uh, piece of wisdom that I learned from my teacher, I think that I learned this from Tendon, uh, is that if the rim is centered, the pot is centered. I like that. If the rim is centered, the pot is centered. So your pot can get all wonky. If the rim's okay, you can always kind of bring it back. Okay, let's see here. I have a mirror in front of me, but it's got so much clay all over it, I can't see anything. Let's see, I have to do the danger move of looking over. Part of the reason I stopped doing pottery is that my body started to feel like, you better take a break. Or you or I'm going to break. <laughs> I need a break or I'm going to break. So I'm trying to be like super conscious of balancing myself out. a slip on my hands to just moisten the back. don't like take the time to stick a pin tool in the bottom and measure the, <laughs> the depth I mean the, the width of the bottom I just feel like you can feel it you can see it like why do that just look and feel but maybe that's something that builds over time but I've gone to um, like famous potters workshops, you know, people who have been doing pottery for like, you know, a decade and they still sometimes do that. I'm like, are you kidding me that you don't know how thick that bottom is? <laughs> I think it's just a habit. <laughs> oh my gosh. So my teacher, Tendon, I ran into him recently at Clayfest, which is a uh, potter's show here in Eugene, Oregon. And he said, do I seem judgmental? He says, as soon as I walk up, people get all freaked out. And, uh, it, you know, he's so good. Like, he is the best. And because he was my teacher, I also feel like that little bit of, not judgmental, but like kind of knowing, knowing what it is to be a great potter, you know, knowing what it is to uh, have that, that level of mastery. But the, still, these people whose workshops I went to, who I'm not going to name, I still call them masters, even though they, <laughs> even though they still stick their tool into the bottom to see how thick it is. Uh, I still think that they're, it's not that they're not masters. I guess we just all have our different 
uh, wheelhouses. Or, like, maybe there's just something romantic about sticking your tool into the bottom to see how deep it is. Maybe that reminds you of your first pottery lesson ever, and you'll just always do that for, like, I have a bias towards, like, speed and efficiency. That's not necessarily the best way. I actually just recently saw somebody on Instagram, and she was like, she was like, I, my way is slow and wobbly and wonky, but I like it. And I just liked her kind of like owning her, um, her style. Which helps me, helps me be a little bit less on that, like, uh, whatever, elitist or whatever. It's just like, soften up. This is a practice. This is, everybody does it their own way. There's not a right way to do it. There's not a best way. I definitely have that kind of training in my head that there's the best way. I think that that's just from our perfectionist culture. Oh, and it's such a relief to let that go because it's such a pressure. We can all put on ourselves. No, I won't say all of us, but I think a lot of people do. I'm definitely guilty of the perfectionist struggle. Working on it. I did that aggressive thing and got a little more clay up off the bottom this time. Trying to make that really nice round form on the bottom for less trimming later. Oh, Sandra, will you, oh, Sandra, I wish I could see what you were saying. All I see is, will you, puh, puh. <laughs> That's all I see is, will you, puh. Can you say some more, maybe in the first couple of words of your thing? Will you, puh. Will I puh? Will I puh? <laughs> hmm? Foot? Yes. I will trim these hopefully tomorrow. I'm going to flip them over tonight, hopefully, if they dry out enough. And I will trim them, trim feet on them. Uh, Tomorrow. Definitely. What's a bowl without a foot? I don't know where all my bats are, so I'm kind of going to use some weird bats right now. I know I have more good bats. Foot. That was perfect. Kind of clay. Perfect. Yes, three word questions are the best here. <laughs> This is called Dark Chocolate Trail Mix. It's from Georgie's, which is an Oregon clay company. And it's a high iron clay. Um, and this clay that I have is from a batch that I bought like seven years ago because I stopped doing pottery. Um, and I still have it in stock. And now the price is through the roof. Like, it's like 80 cents a pound. And... Uh, it's crazy. It's like as it's expensive as like the expensive kinds of porcelain. And so I don't recommend it. <laughs> I just have it. It's just, I just have to use it up because I have it. And, uh, but yeah, dark chocolate trail mix from Georgie's. It's a high iron clay body. Uh, and the iron is from the island of Crete, or was. 
And now I've learned that I think their newer version, what they're selling now, is they actually use manganese. And I always loved this clay because of the because it was an, a dark clay body that used iron and not manganese. But now I don't think that you can get this clay anymore without manganese. So I'm just really grateful that I have it. And this is the last of it. After this, I'll be moving over to Klamath Yellow from Seattle Pottery Supply. Ooh, ooh. I've actually always wanted to use that clay, um, but I chose Georgie's because it's local here. And I don't know. There was like one thing about it that was a little bit different. Klamath Yellow was a little easier to throw. Like I could whoosh, just go up and up, um, but it, um, but I thought that the chocolate looked just a little bit better with my glazes. But when I see these Klamath yellow pots that I made, I just love the way it looks with my glazes. So I'm thrilled to get back to it. And it's so much cheaper. Okay, let's see, we've got some other questions. What kind of clay? <laughs> Well-trained question asker. Okay, I got two more, and then I'm going to wedge up the original two that I lost. I'm going to try to get rid of here. I got these weird bats. I also wet this down. I wet my wheel down because uh, if there's any clay on the bat itself, I don't want like the big dust cloud coming up in my face. So that's where I do some wet it, moistening the bat, wetting down the wheel. And I just like to use whatever's on my hands because it just does that kind of efficient job of cleaning stuff off. Like one last step. I'm looking for questions. I don't know if anybody's ever gone live on YouTube before, but I'm thinking about doing that. I'm also thinking about Twitch. I'm also thinking about TikTok. <laughs> I'm open for suggestions if anybody, I'm sure that you guys, since you're on Facebook, you're like, Facebook, woo! I want to branch out a little bit, just a little bit. I'll never leave Facebook. I'm a Facebook, I'm a Facebook what? Supporter? No, that's not really quite right. Appreciator. I really appreciate Facebook. I get a lot out of it. This is a satisfying pull, that second one. It feels so good. Okay. I like jump up here to support the rim when I get kind of two thirds of the way. It starts looking like it's gonna I'm going to lose it. So here's the part that Tenbin taught me is really compress that bottom here. And that's where I save myself that time at the end. And it also gives it a really nice shape. So instead of here, let me just grab what I'm saying. I don't know if you can see it from here. I'll try to do it on this side, but instead of just going live, Oh, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's my alarm that it's time to get ready for my call at three o'clock. But basically it's like, go from the middle and compress. Don't just go from the sides for that final, um, final shaping of the bowl. Start at the bottom in the middle. This is just taking the slip out and also giving it one more chance at a, a beautiful shape. because the wall is even here. So this wall will not change. You know, when I trim it, I'm just putting the foot on. I'm not trimming the sides at all. Okay, let's do this last one. And then I better go get ready for my cool. I also like to, when I make pots, I start at the bottom. When I, I'm feeding them onto the shelves, bottom to the top. So theoretically, I mean, the stuff on the top is gonna dry faster. So these are drying longer, the ones at the bottom. And it seems to work out pretty well that way. 
they're basically they're going to dry more evenly if I do that. These weird dots are working out okay. Last one. <laughs> if you were here before when I said I taught my daughter when she was little. Let me hear you say last one. When I wanted her to like, just like really like, we had to move on to do something else. Let me hear you say last one. And then she would say last one. And then she'd be done. It was like good enough for her. Last one. Compress the bottom. I'll talk my way through this last one. Compress the bottom. Sometimes two times, sometimes three times, and then a little spiral in the bottom just because I like it. Signature spiral. Pull it to or towards the pointer. Grab it from the center of the bowl. Go underneath. Get as much clay as I can and do my pull. Straight wall. The pull is a straight wall, straight to the rim, straight or straight to the pointer. Then I add the curve of the bowl. Now I'm not moving the clay anymore. I'm just shaping it and pressing it from the inside towards the outside. Now I'm going to push it down in the, bot the bottom, make that nice curve at the bottom. And I don't want to be bending over like this, but I got to clean my, <laughs> clean my mirror off. Okay. Okay. There's this guy on Instagram. I don't know if he's on Facebook too, but his, I think his handle is called tortoise, T-O-R-T-U-S. I think that's it. Uh, I think he's British and he is really a good potter and he can collapse a rim and bring it back to life. Just go flop it over, flop it back, flop it over, flop it back. <laughs> it's really quite something. He's really um, a be beautiful potter to watch and his forms are really nice. So I just want to give a shout out to the amazing potters I have been finding uh, because it, it's more than just Tenbin, it turns out. There's other amazing potters out there too. Probably not that many. Oh wait, back to what I was saying before. All different kinds of great potters. But with that throwing technique, that amazing throwing technique, so Tenbin on Facebook or Instagram, he's T-T-E-A and his last name is Yung, D-U-O-N-G. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks for coming and thanks for asking. I think you were the one who asked those questions. Um, anyway, check, check T out. He's in Junction City, Oregon, really close here to Eugene. And this guy, Tortoise, T-O-R-T-U-S. If I'm wrong about that name, I'll put it in the comments later. Uh, but really, really an amazing, amazing thrower. Okay, I'll be back for trimming and bigger bowls and all smaller bowls and all kinds of stuff. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day or minute.